Hi, I'm Adrian and I'm a designer. And my name is Florin and I'm a developer. And today we're going to talk about life without media queries. Sounds tough, doesn't it? Has your life been better without media queries? Kinda. Do you went to a support group? I did go to a support group. Yeah, it was a CSS Anonymous. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that did happen. Okay. So. No, seriously, uh, we, uh, we had a conversation about this recently. Before we get into that, let's uh, pour a drink, yeah? Okay. Because you, you can still do that with CSS Anonymous. Yeah, okay. So this is called Ginger Ale Eyes. It's a ginger ale, but I saw this in Amsterdam. And I thought it had a nice uh, bottle design. It's organic and stuff. And it seemed like a good idea, so. Okay. After all the nasty stuff we drink, probably this will be good. At least I hope it will be good. I don't know. <laughs> okay. There's about even. All right. Cheers. Mm. Tastes more like ginger beer than ginger it's, ale. Uh, but yeah. yeah, not too bad. I like it. It's good. Refreshing. So, okay, back to this discussion. What was it about? Um, well, you were there. Um, we sat around. I know nothing about that. <laughs> Maybe you need to join a different anonymous there. Oh, okay. Um, now we were uh, sitting in a meeting room and we were discussing a new project. And then uh, we were talking about uh, the use of media queries because this was going to be a project that was going to be developed more or less simultaneously by design and development. So yeah. it would be some mingling there. Um, and I asked uh, because on previous projects then there were some issues with me using too many media queries. And then the developers. But you use like 12. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fair criticism. Uh, so I asked him, well, what, what would be a good, good number? Uh, and he goes like, yeah, well, it depends. <laughs> um, less. Less is better, was, yeah. was the gist of it. And, uh, and then I was like, yeah, but design doesn't really work that way. I mean, I just basically, I drag the browser until it looks shit, and then I add a breakpoint. And then I drag it again, and it looks shit, and I add a breakpoint. Uh, but then we talked about it some more. There were actually some, some interesting insights there that made me feel that media queries are kind of bad. Well, yeah, they're... Well, I think they're, they're, yeah. uh, they're a necessary evil. Um, but I, I think, in general, you can say, you, can say um, mm -hmm. you don't want too many breakpoints. I mean, nope. because every breakpoint or media query is an exception. Um, and that's that's actually very important to me. And when we talked about that, that was like when I heard that, that clicked. That suddenly it was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because one of the things we learn uh, when, when you learn and when you do uh, when you study computer science is that um, programming by exception is a bad idea. Yeah, it's an, it's mostly a maintainability nightmare, no? Um, yes, and the. Uh, and that applies to these media queries as well, because every time you create a media query, and just like you said, you track your browser, and then you see, oh, it breaks. I'm going to fix that right here. But mm -hmm. you did not really, you, you just... You didn't fix the problem, the underlying problem. No, you, you've, you just... You just sort of, well, we're going to We're do going to cut else. off here, I mean, doing, doing something else. Do something else, yeah. yeah. Instead of making something that just flexibly works. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's... But that's... So I think we should de develop and design uh, uh, with as less media queries as possible, at least for things that concern layout and layout flow. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess uh, you can do, because in, in my opinion, when you have a fluid design, and uh, because the, the work we do is mostly that you have a breakpoint, and then it's fluid up until the next breakpoint, and then exactly, it's, yeah, it, yeah. It, so it, it is differently sort of fluid. stretches and stuff in yeah, between. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And if you have that approach, uh, every media query is just like, okay, a fix, uh, a dirty fix. And um, it's been said before. It's sort of an anchor, basically. So. Yeah, so, yeah. It's been said before that media queries are a hack. And I, but I guess if you, do, if you don't do the uh, fluidity between, between breakpoints and just go from... One state, next state. Ne one state, okay. next state. And then, yeah, in between you get some kind of weird, brokenish look. Um, well, you could also just like fix widths and just have margin auto and everything. Yeah, but that's... For instance. Yeah, you could. You could. You could, um, you could just say, well, this is, uh, I don't know, 
800 pixels wide, and then that's that's what it is, and you get stuff on the side, for instance. That exactly. Centers um, it, for instance. I, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. And um, but I guess that could work, but I don't think that's the gives the user the optimal optimal experience. So I am very for having fluidity, fluidity in between. In okay. between, well, well, fluidity across the board. I, I, for me, that just yeah, yeah. Uh, because, because, we, because this is about stop using media query. Yeah, but would it actually be bad? Because you know. Every time I make stuff that's based on, on, for instance, changes or animations based on media queries, you say, well, the only person who, do, who does that dragging of the, of the window, that's developers and designers do that, and no one else. Uh, so maybe having just fixed states, like non-fluid designs, would not be technically a bad experience. Right? Well, um, Let's say, uh, hypothetically, you have a device that's just one pixel short of your next breakpoint. That means mm. you will have, in your center of your screen, you'd have your, your content, and then you have that's a lot fixed. of wasted, lot of, uh, wasted yeah. space. Uh, so that, I, I, I call that a suboptimal experience. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's, that's uh, uh, less than optimal use of your screen real estate. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And especially uh, on, on smaller devices and touch devices where it's important to have, like, Big enough tap targets, that kind of stuff. Exactly, and then Could you have annoying. to zoom because you're annoyed, and nah. so that's uh, that's I not thought. good. But that would be bulletproof, no? I mean, if you did that, then, then yeah. Well, you have problem. control. You have yeah, but that's like um, yeah, you're just that's nailing not, that thing shut, basically. Yeah, you just screw instead of having uh, a hinge at, at the door, you just screw the door shut, and it's yeah, that, that's that secure. Will, that, that will that, that will be closed. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll hold. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, Interesting. And one, one, one of the other problems you, you, you when you, when you do the, um, you know, you, you, you stretch until it doesn't fit and then uh, fix it, that will work with the content you put in there. Mm. But when you put it, implement this in a CMS where the, the, the editors will put in very whatever content, they want, whatever yeah. they want. Um, your layouts need to be bulletproof. Your yeah. your design needs to be bulletproof and should not break just because I could put in other content. Actually, I've had this happen um, where I would design something with certain content, uh, like a menu, for instance. It would be real content, uh, representative content. It right? would be representative of what, what would be actually in there. And then we presented that, and then we went to this meeting, and the client said, well, that's fine, but can you change this word in the menu? And I changed that, which made the thing longer, and then it suddenly didn't work so well. So you have to go back and change but all the media a, queries. And... Again, this is a problem with the media query. It didn't naturally reflow, for instance. Mm. It was just it just broke it because the media query said it can only be this wide. OK. So yeah, so that, 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 that has happened. Yeah. So the first thing, let, so let, let's look into how we're, we, we've been talking about the problems with other approaches. And mm -hmm. um, you said um, we need to have bulletproof layout for, uh, for responsive and for fluid layouts. Yeah. Um, of course, the easy thing would be to just make everything 100% wide and have stretch it, and that will always. Work. That's 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 the idea that HTML in its natural state is actually responsive. responsive. Yes, exactly. It's not a great experience if you have like really large screens <laughs> where text goes from one end to the other like yeah. a mile. <laughs> yeah, that's not really really nice to read. No. But one thing you should do when when you consider working without me media queries is that. You have to embrace the flow, the natural flow of things, and there are actually a couple of approaches that you can take can to, use, yeah. to to use to actually make your site responsive without using media queries. And just m making use of the natural flow that's already in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the things you could do is, for instance, um, use display inline block. It's very well supported, um, and whenever because that will put a block onto a line just like it would an inline element like a span and it would go to the next line if it doesn't fit anymore. Yeah. So that works. That, that works. That, that, that's one thing you could do. Uh, another thing you could do is use floats. And I've actually prepared an example that shows how we can work with this. So uh, shall okay. we have a look? Yeah, let's. OK, so this is the example I prepared. Um, we have a title and some uh -huh. also box with text. Um, is that a title we got, we got from Vasilis van Kemen, no? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, he is actually uh, he he talks about this in one of his talks as well. Doing yeah, that we saw in Zurich yeah. last year. Yeah. So um, 
I have these boxes and I want them to I, I don't want them to break I don't I, I don't want them to become too small um, so it will squish the text I don't I just want them to reflow and go underneath each other when, when, once there isn't enough room anymore yeah. so what I do is um, we have here I have some some boilerplate code just to make l everything look okay and make everything visible um, every div inside the blocks uh, container will have a width of 32% minus one em and i do that as double the margin because uh if i wouldn't do the uh, subtract the margin here they will just they will never fit because no exactly would, yeah, because will, you added the box sizing border box but that only that's only for padding. the that's only for the padding yeah. yeah and i float them so um then uh we have to in the in the parent element we have to remove the margin again for, for the left side and the right side so this always works um I have had heard some people say, okay, you could fix that with first child, and last child, or nth mm -hmm. child, but it's not really possible because you do not know which child is going to be the last one here. So mm -hmm. you have no. to. It could actually it break and the... have then two exactly. children, and then it wouldn't be the last child. Uh, okay. Exactly. So um, yeah, and I added the minimum width because I don't want the boxes to become smaller than a certain amount. Yeah, exactly. And you because it floats, you had to shrink wrap that. Yeah. Uh, exactly because if I remove remove the remove it, it would look like yeah, this. Yeah. So. really good. Um, so, well, and let's make the screen smaller. Yeah, so go responsive. So, yeah, uh, so, so th this works on any size, and then when it doesn't fit, uh, it will have, has now reached the minimum of 10 EM. Yeah, and then it just goes to the next line. Yeah, it goes to the next line, and if it doesn't fit anymore, it goes like next, this. And next line, yeah. next line. So that never, ne that never breaks, you don't get, uh, for instance, if I'd remove the minimal width, You'd get it will just squish it. It will squish it. And now I could add a media query to fix this. But you could, <laughs> but you I could, wouldn't. But, but you can see, of course, you see um, some shortcomings here as well because um, that's a typo there. Um, because this doesn't really look nice. No, because it leaves a lot of room. It just go to the minimal width like of 10 em yeah, and then we'll, fix yeah. it there but it's bulletproof they will always work like this or whatever the size is and that's actually one of my problems with uh using floats because they will go to like the minimum width in your example and then stick to the minimum width and then re reflow i mean that that reposition works. Yeah. reposition that works uh but it doesn't look that nice because the box won't fill out the parent element yeah so that's kind of a but it's a kind of a shame. Pretty, pretty good support. Um, floats have been around for a very long time. The only thing that's a bit um, new is where we use here is the calc um, function. Yeah, that, but that that is required to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, for 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 the margins. Yeah, but I, okay. I guess you could hack around. That. But this would be. Uh, I mean, calc is pretty well supported. Uh, I know and higher. There are some Android versions okay. that have some problem. So. Okay, so mm, mostly bulletproof. Then. Mostly bulletproof. Yeah. Okay, but there is a an even better way to do this, and it's an even nicer one. Even and nicer it one. uses one of my favorite design <laughs> things in CSS to the flexbox. So here, exactly the same uh, HTML, uh, same content, same everything. And the first it looks the same. Yeah. It looks the same. Uh, well, the first thing you notice is that uh, all the boxes are equal height, and that's that's, that's a one dead of the, giveaway of the flexbox. That's the nice thing of, uh, about flexbox. But it's Really, uh, really simple code. So we set on a container display flex, obviously, to make the children behave like flex elements. Yeah. And then we add flex one to all of the divs in there. Yeah, so that distributes whatever width is left over. Yeah, whatever over. width is left over. And, that, and because they all have the same, they will, um, they will, will all be equal width. Yeah. Again, so, um, I have to add, add the margin and then padding. Um, and also the mi the minimal width. Um, yeah. So you ha basically that is the breakpoint here. Yeah. So it tells it tells the browser when to reflow. Exactly. So she goes smaller. If you go smaller, you've seen this before. Then it will do this, and this is a really nice thing because it fills it, goes, it out. Yeah. Yeah, it fills it out. That's really cool. We, well, maybe if you work with images, that may not always be what you want. So yeah. No, have but to, for this solution, yeah, that, that works. That, quite well, that yeah. works really well. And if it, if I go even smaller, it will just flow correctly in this way. So yeah, exa exactly. Once all the elements are under yeah. 10 EM or at 10 EM, actually, yeah. it'll just reflow. 
So, but I need to use the uh, flex wrap property for this, so it will actually wrap to because otherwise I get this. Yeah, because st standard behavior in flex is not to wrap. No, so it, it will now it will now it will shrink to the minimum width of each box at 10 em, and then it doesn't really know what to do, and it will keep it there. Exactly. So that's really uh, really important that we add flex wrap here. Yeah. We're also making use of the like the align item stretch, which is also the standard yeah. setting. It's a default setting. You default, could you yeah. can of course tweak that and make it look like more like the uh, float version if that's what you want. If that's what's required, okay. of course. And this is actually one of my favorite ways to do that. I really like uh, flexbox in combination with minimal width. So that's like nearly bulletproof. I don't know how well supported it is. I think pretty well. No? It's pretty well. There were some browsers uh, up until recently that, and that recently I mean, year ago, year, year one or two years ago, that would not support flex wrap. Oh, that's super. Yeah, but uh, but <laughs> now, but, but these were but these were evergreen browsers, so that's not really a big deal because they would update continually. So that uh, support is really good. Yeah, and that's uh, basically as bulletproof as you can get. Yeah, uh, without the, a media query, no. Without a media query, always uh, always very, but still. Yeah. We said media queries, okay, um, are bad, et cetera, et cetera. Because I, I don't think there is a way around media queries. Um, because if you wanted to have changes in style or ordering of mm -hmm. your content, that would still require you to use media queries. Yeah, yeah. You still need a, a point where you would actually change. Yeah, and even newer but specifications that are in the works, like the um, uh, they were first called the element queries, but they're oh. not going to happen because they're superseded by container queries. Um, but still, seen. these are no. It's not the same because the element query would match their own width, and then you could do something based on your own width. Okay. But that would couldn't be able. You would be able to create loops with that, uh, because you'd say oh, um, yeah, yeah. sizes. You me this um, yeah. Yeah. So minim you said a minimum width of uh, five hundred pixel, yeah, and you do exactly. the breakpoint at four ninety nine or something. Yeah. So and then you then you would have continuously yeah, yeah. go. Up so they had the grid the. The container creators are like the next level for this uh, specification. Um, I really hope we'll see them someday. It's still I a performance see. thing because that will be based on their parent, and then you have, don't have these uh, these problems. Yeah, that would so be really cool. That would be really, really cool. But it's still you keep in mind that these are still exceptions, yeah. except they're scoped to a lower level because the media query is like the whole viewport, and this will be just on a. On, on yeah, one, so you can one, say yeah. uh, th once this container becomes uh, less than 500 pixels, do this. Do something. Yeah. Do something else. It's still an exception, basically. Yeah, uh, still, but it's it's more scope. It's more fine grained. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have it all over the place and well, has some more fine control, I guess. Exactly. Okay. Well, again, I don't think media queries are should be avoided entirely because I don't think you can. It's, it's just not happening. No, no, no. But no, let's let's as at least as designers, let's be conservative in when we apply them. Let's think hard how we can make this work with how can we make something without work without uh, media queries. without media queries and make it simpler yeah and but this is also the code is a lot more simple as you can see yeah and it helps helps developers uh, you know understand. make stuff more maintainable easier to understand it's and, more it's, and it's safer to use for editors than anyone using your yeah. code and we can design around it so that's, yeah. that's really cool okay all right, so thank you all for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, DigiPaint and Asphalt Photo, for making this all possible. And we'll see you in the next one.